Okay, so the purpose of this video is really just to break down 99 designs, which is one of the mechanisms you can leverage to get logos and other creative work done for your brand. What's different about 99 designs versus say a Fiverr is that you can actually run contests and I just find that they have a little bit more curated graphic designers for logo and identity design uh, than does Fiverr. Fiverr is still a valid option, especially if you like someone's portfolio, you can definitely go that route. Um, but again, 99designs just offers the contest element and I think a little bit more depth in terms of people uh, that are on their platform. So basically after you sign up, you can just kind of select the logo and identity. They've got a bunch of different options if you wanna get multiple things done. But if you just come down to logo design, you can start a contest again, or you can actually go ahead and find a graphic designer, but let's just kind of look at the contest option so you can see this. And then it does some things just to kind of get an idea of what your kind of design aesthetic is to help hone it in a little bit. So I've selected a couple that I think would be a good fit. So let's see if there's any other ones. Uh, doo -doo. Continue. And then it gives you all these different metrics. Uh, I just leave it as is. Don't need to get too quirky about it. Colors, I think we're gonna go dark neutrals with this brand, so it's black and white. English, so we wanna have birdie in the logo. No. So then I just put a little bit of descriptor so they can get a little idea of the vibe. And then it's gonna ask for the industry, you're gonna go ahead and put sport. We just need the basics. I'm just gonna say check out the logos of Titleist, Bad Birdie, for Dirty Bird, which is these guys here, for some inspiration. So you, I think one of the things with logo design is you definitely wanna have some reference brands that fit kind of the aesthetic and vibe and maybe even customer profile that you're going after. Doesn't at all need to be in the same industry. Oftentimes it actually works best if it's not in your industry. Uh, but just giving some examples of kind of the brand aesthetic that you like will help direct them into the, the path that will best align with what you're looking to achieve with your brand identity. And then it asks for some uh, sketches, et cetera, that might be helpful. So let's just go ahead and copy the cool, so there's three reference files. Go ahead and hit continue. And then it gives you different options on packages. So one is about 30 designs, uh, so it's kind of designed in a budget. This is about 60 design with a larger, larger designer prize. There's the gold, which is basically just curated designers only. And then there's the platinum. So let's just go ahead and do the silver and just see kind of what we get. Logo design for startup golfing brand birdie and then you basically just like show whether it's guaranteed or not whether you want it to be private or not how long you want it to run um, just to kind of curate this a little bit let's go ahead and keep it uh, private just so it's not like everybody and their mom seeing it and then there's the standard seven days Let's go ahead and select the three days and just see what we can get in three days. Gonna hit continue. Gonna throw in my details here, uh, which you don't need to see, and then we'll close it out. And then we will come back in three days and take a look at what some of the options are and hopefully find a kick-ass logo that we like. Okay, so what happens when designs start to come in is you'll actually get an email notification so you can go check them out in real time as submissions happen. And if you've got comments or you kind of like certain elements but you want to tweak certain elements, you can actually come in here and actually leave a comment. Um, so in this one, I actually left a comment on this uh, guy just to kind of make some changes to his mark. So even though the contest is for three days, during that three-day period, you can actually interact with the designers and get tweaks made. So let's say I wanted certain changes to this. I could log in and give this particular designer comments and they can adjust it and change it. But it's been three days and the contest is now closed. And we can see that there's been 34 submissions for this particular logo contest. So let's just kind of go through this and see if any of them are interesting. So what I like to do is just kind of take the ones that I think are potentially pretty interesting and I'll just kind of like copy them and I'll bring them into Canva just so I can kind of see them all 
together. You can see here the comments that can be made here on the side. You can also rate them to let other designers know kind of what aesthetic you like. Let's see here. This is another one from the same designer that I thought was pretty cool. Throw that one in there. Another one that I liked from that same designer. That one's actually really cool. Kind of like that. Let's just see if there's any others. A lot of them were kind of like feminine that I didn't really like. This is that same designer that did just kind of a different font. Some of them you'll obviously get a lot of crappy ones too, which is okay. This one's pretty good. I think if this is a little bit more feminine, but it's kind of got some interesting kind of look to it. This one's actually pretty cool. Might be a little bit hard to read. But I would probably put that in the contender list. Again, if you're the customer archetype, it helps to piece this stuff together a little bit. But I'm literally just taking the visuals that I think are pretty solid. This one's took a bit of a different angle on it. <clears throat> but this one, I kind of like what they did with the T for the Y. That's kind of cool. Throw that one in. And that's it. So I think that those are the ones that I think were the most compelling. So we'll just kind of look at these here. Kind of in concert. I like the kind of boldness of this. It's like easy to read. I think that this one's the one I probably like the most. It's got the flag. It's got the birdie in it. It's maybe a little bit kind of like edgier and or feminine a little bit for maybe our archetype but I think it could work and it could really look good on kind of stamped onto product we could even maybe even ditch this birdie at the top for some of them if we wanted to so that could be pretty cool so yeah looking at this one again I do kind of like the at the top of that that's pretty cool actually but I just think that this one's a little too busy I also kind of like the underline but this one's a little bit cleaner another option is to kind of see if this designer can maybe take that bird and put it at the top of the D so we can maybe do a couple tweaks before we finalize that one. And then this one's just good for perspective. This one's a little bit more, I would say boring, but again, for our archetype, that might actually be okay. Um, but this one's decent too. So what I would do at this stage, if I don't have a clear cut decision that I can make on my own is I would actually go out and survey people, whether it's Reddit, Facebook groups, but survey the actual archetype just to see what they like. If you are the archetype or you have access to friends that are the archetype, you could also just pass it out to them, text them, be like, hey, which one of these do you like? Uh, I actually might do that with some of my golfing buddies. And then a third option, which we talked about before, is you can actually do some PicFu contests as well. The downside of PicFu is that it's not necessarily gonna be a golfer archetype, so it's a big downside, but it's easy to scale and you can get feedback really quick. So what I might do is I might take a couple of these contenders and set up a PicFu contest just so you guys can see what that looks like. But the ideal approach would be to actually reach out to people that are archetypes and try to get some feedback from them on which logo to select. So while I think for this stuff it's important to speak to actual customer archetypes, I at least wanted to show the example of PicFu, which is super easy to set up and super easy to scale quickly to get feedback from actual people. Again, they may not be golfers, which can be a hindrance, but it really is good getting some directional insights into images, logos, product concepts, etc. So I want to kind of take two of these logos um, here from the designer here, uh, these, these two, and to see if we can't get some consensus, some database analysis from PicFu just to see. And then what I might do is take one of those winners and put it up against maybe this more conservative option just for fun. So you basically just sign up for PicFu. I think most of the time they give you a free one to start out. I'll try to get an affiliate code and leave that as a link in the resources. Uh, but I know Anthony really well. He's just a, an amazing guy in the space and knows a lot about the aesthetics and images and A-plus content. Uh, so he's awesome. I'll see if he can hook us up. But basically, if we want to, uh, you set up an account, <clears throat> go to start a poll, and then uh, we can use Poll Builder for e-commerce as an example, or you can kind of do a custom one. Let's just kind of go through the template. We're going to look at a logo. Let's look at the best design. Which logo do you prefer for for our golf e-commerce brand. Go to the next step. So the option A, 
and then option B. And that is it. We'll go to the next step. Let's go to a custom audience and see if we can home this in a little bit. So again, we're going to select our customer archetype age here and kind of hone that in a little bit. Credit score, again, since this guy is, I would say, in the upper tier, it would probably be like north of 690. So I think that will help. Education degree. Let's do bachelor's and graduate. Let's go to mail there. You can do income range and other things if you want as well. All right, so I think that's good for now. Again, it's gonna be much more expensive if you're using these custom filters. That's why it's probably easier to go to places like Reddit, your friend group that are the archetype, or Facebook for this. If you just want generic, like, hey, how does the average customer look at this? PickFu is good for that. You don't even need to select all this stuff and it could be like 50 bucks. But in this case, we've done more of a premium option because we're gonna go big with this. So let's just start with 50, should be fine. Go to the next step, go to the next step. I typically don't like to make it public because there are some Amazon sellers on here that might be looking to take your ideas. Everything looks good, proceed to check out. So again, in this case, they'll credit you 50 bucks for your first one. So if you just do a simple poll, it's literally 50 bucks. But in this case, we've done much more premium, which you absolutely don't have to do, but it's one option. And then I'm just gonna complete the order. And we are live and it's collecting data. So we'll come back when this thing is done so we can start to see at least what the folks on PicFu have to say. Okay, so it took a few days because we used a lot more custom criteria, which whittled down the field. So we had a much more isolated survey base. If you just do a generic one for 50 bucks, you usually get your feedback in a couple hours. But we are done, so you, you can again see your audience and all that stuff here at the top. And then it's a pretty clear cut win here. We basically had 24 votes for the one here on the right and we had 12 votes for the one on the left. So 67 to 33, that's super definitive from a statistical standpoint. You can even see up here the statistically significant if you just go on the question mark. There's some mathematics around stats uh, across, they use it for voting, they use it for surveys, they use it for customer research. Um, so there's math to determine, hey, is this thing actually statistically significant? And if it is, that's a good thing from a survey standpoint. And this one is. If this was like a 52.48 or 51.49, it's kind of a coin flip and you might need to defer to some additional analysis or just go with your gut. But this one's pretty clear cut, right? Like the, the one on the right is the winner. So what I'm gonna do here too is it also gives you a lot of good feedback on both the options A and B that you can kind of whittle down. So you can see there's a ton of different feedback in terms of why did people actually select the one that they did. And there's oftentimes some insights and some advice and nuggets that you can take from these comments and incorporate it into final changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna consolidate my feedback for this designer on 99designs and I'm gonna lock in the final design. I think what I'm probably gonna do is to take that birdie out of the flag. I might take that as a mark so we could have it separately, maybe make it yellow like the one that we did in the Canva design. So I'll probably give him a little bit of feedback just to kind of get this a little bit more dialed, but we're gonna go ahead and lock this one on the right in. So you can see some archetype based thing. I actually just for fun surveyed a couple of my buddies that I know are golfers. And we'll get into that next before we put a bow on this one, but that's 99 designs and then ultimately using PicFu to help isolate which option is best. And just so you can see what an archetype survey looks like, it's super informal. I actually had four buddies I interacted with here over the last week that are golfers, so I decided to take the opportunity to survey them. My buddy Justin Liu, I basically just said, which one of these do you prefer? He's like number two, more overt on what it is. And then he kind of gave some other feedback on the burn image. Um, so anyway, uh, quick feedback from him. Graham, actually another Amazon seller, actually was having a Amazon related conversation with him, realized that he was a golfer, so I followed up the next day. Again, you kind of just got to snap on these archetypes as you encounter them in your life to get feedback. And again, you can weaponize them later as super friendlies. But he basically just said he liked both logos. He would say number two is better. He liked the flag incorporated in the word. He liked the aesthetics of the font style, but thought it would be beneficial to make the font a little bit easier to read. So good feedback there. My best Aussie buddies, Jamie and Michael, I pinged them here on Facebook. Michael responded pretty quickly and said, hey mate, hope you're well. I like the logo with just the text without the bird icon, looks pretty cool. Said awesome. 
And then the one uh, kind of differing opinion was Jamie's. I hope you're well. The logo with the bird icon looks better for me. The bird and the flag is kind of pretty cool. Could try including both potentially. I must admit, I like a logo with a separate icon attached so you can use on items it's, uh, itself or merch, etc. For me, the bird icon and the circle look better. So I think that's good feedback to have like the icon. And I think that might be something we may want to hold on to for badging and other things that we do with this particular brand. But that's what it looks like, guys. If you encounter your archetype in your day-to-day -day life or have people in your life that are the ar archetype, just hit them up via text, Facebook, email, whatever your mechanism of communication is. Have them uh, give you kind of unwavering feedback uh, down the middle and, and use it where appropriate. So that is branding using 99designs, PicFu, and a little bit of archetype surveys.